Hello, Elizabeth. Welcome back. Great to be back. Oh, I'm very pleased to have you back. I don't actually remember when you were last on, but it's got to be a good couple of years ago, maybe? A few years ago, something to do with the um, the heroine's journey, I believe. Yes, which actually is a really kind of like, when I think of this being the one that comes next, it's actually a really beautiful kind of next chapter, isn't it, from that? Perfect. Like, like we planned it that way. <laughs> like we planned it or something planned it that way. Mm. So we are going to explore what, as we were talking prior to hitting record, has become like an increasingly juicy topic. Um, certainly for me, as you know, like I'm obsessed with archetypes, anything at an archetypal level, like immediately gets my attention. And really that idea of this lost archetype this missing archetype from our culture is what you and i are here to help reclaim to help yeah. bring back as as a possibility for women but it goes deeper than that for me at least this is for our culture mm. this mm. is an incredibly important archetype, an incredibly needed archetype, probably now more than ever. I couldn't agree with you more. And I think that I say those words all the time. We need this now more than ever. Yeah. I'm going to start with a little story that just, um, as we ran to get drinks before we hit, hit record, I had this little story come into my mind that I feel like is an example of what we are wanting to create in this conversation. Like it exists, it's just in not in most people's awareness. And it's a really tiny story, but I think you'll understand why energetically this came to mind. So as you and many listeners will know, part of the shamanic lineage I trained in, although it is like thoroughly British shamanism based in this land and the spirits the medicine of this land we also have a kind of entwinement with a, an indigenous mexican lineage um which you know beyond blessed to have so so grateful that they've been the medicine carriers the keepers of that ancient wisdom and then been so generous to share that with us I was talking to another shaman who's in in my lineage and she, she was we were just having a conversation about something that one of the women, Marakami, which is the name for the shamans there, had been telling her. And the reverence with which she said the, this word I'm about to tell you is everything that we're talking about here. We were talking about a protective belt that you might wear in ceremony to protect you spiritually, energetically. And as she was talking about, she said, yes, a grandmother told me that this is to be worn here over the navel to protect you. And when she's saying grandmother, she doesn't mean she's just a mother of a mother. She means what we're talking about here. Absolutely. And I like felt that at every level like we don't have that we don't mm -hmm. have those grandmothers mm -hmm. that can tell us what we need to do can show us the way can act as those role, role models and that mm -hmm. was the story that just came to mind just before we started recording I wanted to share that with you because it it still exists mm -hmm. we just don't have her here in this culture mm -hmm. and we need her more than ever we do So the wisdom of the grandmothers is the wisdom that the world is yearning for. Mm. And I just want to just cycle back a little bit to my own heroine's journey where, you know, really Waking the Wild probably began, didn't it, with mm. Waking the Wild Feminine? I think that yeah. was your first Christmas 
It and did. I and yes. it was part of that first crucible. Mm -hmm. And the feminine and, goes um, first, and she did. The feminine goes oh. first. The feminine <laughs> goes first. Which, by the way, we often see the masculine as the leader because it's visible, but the feminine always tips the wink. The mm. feminine always says, so we have How about this? Mm. Oh, yeah. See, we always think the man goes up to the woman and asks her out and buys her a drink, but never without the look that mm. it's okay to do that. But yeah. that invitation, that energetic invitation, the, the feminine offers an energetic invitation. Yes. And that is really at the heart of, of what I have really want to share about wise women or women in their third chapter or, or women elders. I have actually a word for it. I call it maven, which means in Yiddish, one who understands. Oh, mm, I didn't know that word, right? Mm. And they, they, in the Jewish tradition, they're very keen on nobody kind of teaching anyone anything until they're over 40. So they've got a lot of respect mm. in the in the Jewish Yiddish tradition for the elders. And yeah. so one who understands has earned their place. And so I prefer the word maven to other words that we might use for a woman in her third chapter. And we'll talk mm. more about that. Um, but this this idea that the that that what the feminine brings to the table is so necessary and needed in our world today. And I think there's a awakening to that, this this idea of energetic balance, mm. rebalance. I mean, you and I have a very um Oh, I don't know quite the word. I want to say embodied, but that's not quite the right word. We're not, we're not, we're not screaming. We hate the patriarchy. <laughs> you know, that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about this, this, this balance energy. We're talking about honor, honoring both and, mm. and seeing them in their full fullness and perfection and beauty. And I think that was my first awakening to the feminine was to not, to see its perfect, perfect place in the whole, its necessary place, its its sacred place, and and yet it, it energetically it's more invisible energy in a sense than the masculine. The masculine is often about this. We're doing this. We're making this happen. Mm -hmm. We're achieving this goal. This is the progress. This is the, you know, the, the, there's a certainty, this confidence, this clarity energy, which is so beautiful. I love it. Mm, but, but we've been conditioned to value that and own value that. it mm. and it's more visible in a sense mm. you know it's it's of the it's, I often think of um the feminine is like the earth it's under the earth in a way and then the masculine is like New York City being built mm. on the you know in on the, seeing it against the backdrop of the sky so you see New York but you don't mm. see the earth that holds it and yet there is no New York without the earth mm. holding it underneath and, I, and all the things that go on underneath to make it so. So I really want to just honour my own journey with the feminine um, as a woman who, who operated very much as a leader in a masculine environment with men and off, became a bit like them, I think, to, to compete. IBM, big shoulder pads, it was the 80s, you know. <laughs> um, so you just, time is money, you know, all that energy. And so I kind of got into that. And But it's, it's ultimately uh, there was a point where it was not a sustainable thing for me in my life or as a woman. Mm. And I really started to engage with the work that that we did on our journey, which was what is it to be feminine led? What is it to be devoted to the to the feminine energies? And what does that mean um, in my life? But what does it mean inside of me? You know, and mm. I came to a real um a deep love, appreciation, honoring respect for what the feminine energy brings in its um in its heart-centered love you know in its compassionate embrace of all and that's the first portal I believe that a truly wise woman will go through mm. is to to recognize that in herself to claim it or reclaim it and to um, it's not, yeah, I'm going to use the word unapologetic because often as women, we can be apologetic for mm. all sorts of things, for being here, needing anything, you know, um, having a feeling, 
so there's an unapologeticness of reclamation of the feminine that is not militant. It's it's truly embracing. And when we do that um, as a woman and especially as an older woman, um, it, it has a lot of power. Mm. It has a lot of power for others. So it I, is, I feel like that. It is power, isn't it? And that's it is power. The, yes, it is yeah. power. It's pure power. The... Um... We were talking before recording about the fox woman myth. Yeah. And I'd written a post about it a couple of years ago and then uh, shared it again recently. And this is such an important aspect of a woman's journey to wise woman, like understanding her as a woman has to come first. Yes. We can't yes. just kind of bolt on wise when there hasn't been that reclamation of woman, this whole That's bodied, right. whole blood, blooded, whole souled woman. And the reason I both, both kind of like love and also not hate, but kind of like feel very sad about the fox woman fairy tale is we are playing it out culturally at the moment. So in that myth, as, as you'll know, Elizabeth, initially when the hunter and the fox woman come together it is just bliss you know that just celebration of each other their differences the fact that she brings all this like magic and beauty into the hunter's life and she's really appreciating his provision you know food warmth roof over her head and at some point the smell of her pelt and if you've ever smelt a fox's pelt which is what what instigated oh, no, you Smith, yes I worked with a fox's body and I know very well the smell and why that would be something that would create a real um resistance to be with in the hunter so anyway the cutter cut a long story short it, it, he becomes increasingly unhappy with her pelt she at a point decides it can't work leaves and then there's just uh, Martin Shaw's telling of it has this particular line that something like after she's gone this hunter can be st seen today lonely in his whole body lonely in his whole body looking out over the landscape where she is never to be seen again and so it has a really like, you know, hey, I'm a girl that loves a happy ending. It does not have a happy ending. <laughs> but I truly, I don't even believe, I know we are rewriting the end of that story mm -hmm. in everything we're talking about today. But first and foremost, it has to be the reclamation of the woman, of the fox woman, to make this archetype of the wise woman even possible. And, you know, the first reclamation is with yourself, mm. with your own fox pelt. Absolutely, with your own... which is the hardest, like it, nothing can, this is the thing we project it out there. We think our culture doesn't love fox women. We think our husband doesn't love fox women. It's only mirroring our own lack of acceptance of our inner fox women. Absolutely. Mm. And, I, and then that's the, that's the work is to um, recognize, honor, um, be what we are, be what we actually are, not an idealized, sanitized version of ourselves. Mm. That's really at the heart of waking the wild as well. You yes. know, it's like we are nature. We are blood and guts and secretions and, you know, tears and, you know, it, it, blood, sweat and tears, you know, we are all of those things. We are bodies. We're ruled by energies, you know, the moon, the tides, you know, we, these are all true. And then you know, we're, we're more like trees than washing machines. Mm. <laughs> and yet we, <laughs> push, we expect ourselves, push a button, go, push a oh, button, go. Goodness, push yes. button go. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so that reclamation of the wild feminine is, an absolutely necessary thing and it's also what sustains you and allows you to serve others as a wise woman when it's your time mm. to become that phase you cannot do it you cannot hold others until you can hold the human in yourself yes the 
the, mm. the, the you know, our true nature, which is both divine and human, but both aspects actually. But but I think we're really speaking to the wild um, element of us. And yeah, so I think that's a really crucial journey. And I just want to talk a little bit about menopause here, oh. because if there's ever a fox pelt that we might need to talk about. <laughs> Fox pelt being the new word for things we don't want <laughs> in our house. Fox pelt, the new word for menopause. I love that. Yeah, well, you know, as an as an example. Totally, of, totally. Yeah. So that so look, I'm just gonna not pretend anything. I'm just gonna be all absolutely brutal about this. There's seems to be ideas around that birth. Um, menstruation or menstruation birth whatever where you go um, menopause and death are medical procedures or involve, require medical involvement they are literally the most natural things in the world mm. yeah literally <laughs> literally so yes can there be a medical problem like your leg is a it helps you walk it's natural if it hurt, if it breaks, it's a medical issue, but you don't need medical assistance to walk. It's mm -hmm. like that, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really great thing. analogy. Mm -hmm. you no. Know, so, so menopause is, is the most beautiful, perfect thing. But if we live in a world where we're meant to be more like washing machines than trees, then, then of course it makes sense to medicate men menopause mm. and keep going, or it makes sense to do all the things to stay young. Or it makes sense, yeah, to, to pretend you're not your age mm. or whatever it is. Because in a world where, you know, it it it's not natural, then then that would make sense to somebody. Mm. Or I have to stay young, or I have to keep doing what I've been doing and keep doing, you know, I have to don't don't stop the service <laughs> because of menopause. Mm. A lot of the medic, you know, we've been told we need to take all these things. Now, what is true in my experience, is that menopause is a rite of passage and your body will get your attention wherever you're not in alignment. Mm. It is the great reckoning of your life. Yes, like and it, all rites of passages and all initiations, they yes. will show you exactly what you need to see, whether Absolutely. you see it or not. And it will come, you won't know what form it is because the way that it works, it's somehow, I, all I knew was I would get a reckoning. Mm. I'd get the bill <laughs> somewhere. I didn't know where and I didn't know how. It's like, oh, is it my relationship? That seems pretty good. You know, or is it my work? That seems okay. Or my, you know, relationship with my, whatever, my family. Mm. I didn't know where the check, where I get the bill, the reckoning, but I knew that there was one coming. It didn't occur to me that I would need to slow down. Out of all the things that could it it could have been, mm. slowing down was never <laughs> considered as an option. And yet my journey into the feminine taught me the need of slowing down. But menopause, it it had me realize that I I needed to live differently. I needed to live with less stress. My body was calling. For, for less, not more. Mm. And I'd lived in a more is more in, world in my head. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. Put me down. The, um, that washing machine tree metaphor, I think such a, such a good one for illustrating so much of this. Um, Something just came to mind where a friend of mine went for um, a check um, to do with her ovaries. And when she was there, the nurse asked her, are you, she's, she's past menopause. And the nurse asked her, are you on HRT? And my friend said, no. And the nurse said something like, oh, okay. It's just that um, when you're on um, HRT, it has, and I can't quite remember what it was. It was to do with the cervix or the ovaries. Basically, it would make the nurse's job easier. Um, so that's what she was commenting. She wasn't saying it like, therefore, it's a huge problem. You're not. But she was just making the point, like, if you were on HRT, this would be easier. And my friend has the wisdom to think to herself, huh? Does that not make you, like, you know, like, question, like, 
should these things be different? You know, like should my internal organs be different because I'm taking something? Like, doesn't that question make you question, like, should I be taking this thing? And like, and it was so such a beautiful example of like a woman who has that like wisdom and knowing of herself, her body, and the fact this like throwaway comment of like it would be easier if you're on HRT because then your body would be this way. And it's just like, but hang on, my body isn't that way because it's as it should be. <laughs> and um I think this is whether it be how we look, whether it be our energy levels, like you're talking about resting. When we consider ourselves as again, like we can just press a button and we're going to do the same cycles we've ever done. And then things, you know, oh, okay, there might be this thing called menopause, but I can still just keep pressing the button and do whatever I need to make it. If I press that button, my cycle will still happen. Um, it is just like at like the most first principles level, if we are looking at ourselves like that, it will have us do a whole bunch of things that don't make sense when we don't realize we're not the washing machine. Absolutely. It's, um, it's so, it, everything you've just said, it just really makes me um, think about how we don't respect the natural order of things. Mm. And the, the, the natural order of things is at a certain age, a woman stops reproducing. Mm. So all up till then, she's been a maiden and a mother, right? And she's been, um, she's wanting to be attracting. She's wanting to, she's busy. She's doing, she's producing, she's creating and she's learning. And then menopause is like this kind of opportunity to make a shift now, mm. preparing you for the third chapter. And it's actually asking you, no, no stop looking out there. Stop mm. looking at the children. Stop looking at the, your attractiveness and, your, and the, the male gaze. This is now a time to go in and really pay attention. Mm. Now you want to pay attention to what is wanting to happen for you, through you, as you. Mm the next phase because you have become this is where the word maven comes in one who understands you will have become post by the time you're 50 ish which is let's most women do menopause sort of around 50 an expert in something mm. every woman even if it's child rearing even if it's cleaning i'm not i'm not dissing cleaning i'm i i worship the people that clean in my life um <laughs> so cooking yeah dressmaking or leading or singing or mm. how to serve quietly holding how to nurse somebody when they're sick there'll be an area where you are a, a maven and that is your job now your job isn't to do that anymore it's to teach and to show and to mm. pass the old ways down like it's the grandmother to, in my story. Like the grandmother. It is your time mm. now to empower others. And for that, you need to be in alignment with yourself and you have to see that your time is not, you're not the doer now. You're the empower of the next generation of doers. Mm. And for that to be done well, you are um, in your feminine. You're, that, you're, oh, my goodness. There is something so, so precious and so delicate and so, what you've just said there, I just heard in a way that I've not heard it before. That move between, from doing to teaching, to be the guide, be the role model, that's huge. And again, something we've completely lost culturally. Or even if we have it, we don't really see it. We don't really value it. Well, I have a theory. I think I might have read it somewhere. But we all know the story of the woman who walks into the room and goes, why am I in this room? <laughs> what, what was that? You know, 
And mm-hmm. I always remember it as baby brain when I was breastfeeding and it just feels exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And I'm often forgetting the word for something. You know why? You don't need that. Mm-hmm. You don't need the details anymore. Your jo- you, Your brain doesn't need them. Mm. so you don't remember them but it does remember it, it's got a more strategic mind now mm. it, it is there to see a bigger vision yeah it is there beyond you are not just serving you you are serving something bigger you're not needing that level of detail to deliver and do it your day-to-day that you you needed when you were younger you're there to be to use a different part of yourself a part that is more receptive to a you could say a spiritual vision mm-hmm. and that is your role as a grandmother now is to hold the whole and to serve the whole and I just want to um just make a little segue to my why I think wise women are going to save the world mm-hmm. because everyone listens to them I'm talking about a woman who has reclaimed her feminine, who is in her power, who's embodied and listens to her soul's guidance. Mm, This is what I'm talking about. Which is so rare. So people listening are like, no, that's because they haven't met one of those yet, which is completely understandable given they hardly exist in our culture. And they many, many Indigenous women are in this model. And and then we might have met a few along the way, maybe our own grandmother, maybe mm. an aunt, maybe a teacher at school, maybe somebody at church or somewhere else. We are um, have that knowing of that archetype. We mm. do. Even, even if we haven't got an actual person, we've kind of met it here and there. Yeah. And, yeah, so the wise woman envisions receives a vision and desires and built into that desire is what serves the whole because that's the feminine feminine knows what won't want something that isn't is self-serving will want only what serves the whole so that's built into the vision and then the masculine and this is something we were all talking about earlier is designed to serve the feminine's desire. Mm. So when the wise woman speaks without fear, because she's fearless, she's not trying to get a mate. She's not trying to please someone. She's just speaking her maven truth. She receives the vision. She expresses it in the world. The masculine hears the call and goes, how do I make that so? Because that's the nature of the masculine and feminine energetic. So if the wise women around every table, around every business, around every circle of of group, community, were speaking a more beautiful world, to quote Charles Eisenstein, our hearts know is possible, and that's what she's envisioning and that's what she's calling forth, the masculine wants to provide that. And if that's our job as wise women, to, to speak for love, to speak for the planet, to speak for the earth, to speak for what will serve. And for that, we need to reclaim our feminine and take our place at the table and for Mm. our voice to be heard as a wise woman, as a grandmother. And that's the healing because we want the masculine to progress and provide and deliver and achieve the goals and make, make things manifest in form and all the wonderfulness with clarity and confidence. You know, we want that from them. But without the what the the feminine's vision for what will serve the whole, it can easily end up focusing on progress for its own sake. Mm. Let's yeah, have which more. Is really, where we are right now as a culture, isn't it? Isn't it? Mm. But this is what I do want to say, and do you know what I say this a lot to people, and they no one argues. So I'm normally when I'm when I tell all sorts of different people from all walks of life this this thing I'm going to say now that. And I don't get an argument. I know that there must be, this is this is universal truth. This is not mm. just Elizabeth's opinion. But I've seen it. I've seen it with clarity. When a wise woman is in her power, like we said, aligned, soul-led, heart-led, embodied, fearless speaker of truth, young women listen to older wise women, especially when they're giving birth. Mm. especially at those crucial moments in life so younger women respect older women young men respect older women Mm. when 
and they're not crazy Karen, my, you know, but I'm talking about this wise woman who's in her power. Why? Because she's empowering. She does not try to tell you what to do. Mm. She wants you to be, to thrive and be yourself. But you know who respects wise women the most? Her peers, her men. Mm. There is not a man who makes a decision without first checking the instinct, intuition, and sense knowing of the wisest woman in his life. Mm. It's a rare man. So the the wise grandmother who's not there about herself anymore, who's not trying to attract a mate or trying to be all this or show she can do it or, or prove anything, she's sitting there happily knitting, let's say, stirring the pot, doing whatever she's doing metaphorically. But she's so neutral and she's so unattached to her own desire, you know, need to make X happen. She's only empowering. It's, it's, you trust it. You mm. trust that. Oh, and I that is that. why that yeah. voice needs to be heard at every mm. table. And especially, and this is my own personal area of interest, the business table mm. around the business meeting. Yes. I had, Let's, um, I, sorry. I'd like to, <laughs> I could you know, this is, this is gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, absolutely beautiful. And, um, Let's go to business in a moment because I completely agree with you, yeah. but I just want to add a couple of things to this, which is yeah. there's, I, I've, I'm not yet at menopause and yet part of what you've been saying in terms of, again, this wise woman archetype, there is absolutely, I'm not going to going to disagree at all that there is a vital part of that initiation fully into wise women that can only come via menopause so I'm not at all saying <laughs> I, I have the full embodiment of that without that having happened for me yet and yet she is also an archetype that we can begin to be in relationship with um, before menopause very consciously <laughs> and one of the ways that I teach women is to particularly in their bleed part of the cycle archetypally that's the wise woman where we again are inwards we're not out there trying to you know bless the world with our energy our beauty anything like that we are inwards really open to receive from spirit and the more and again that is talk about the pelt the fox's pelt again right there the blood of of the that part of our cycle is again that part that would like unless we can be fully with that yes. no one else can and so that's right the, re the reason i'm saying that is i think again like so much that we talk about in terms of menopause like we can prepare ourselves by really becoming conscious of these archetypes before we're kind of like fully ready to move into them and i can tell you that as I've really embraced that archetype within me, what you just said there in terms of like, there's no man that's kind of like got any sense that would not come to that, the wisest woman in his life for that kind of guidance, that kind of seeing, like that's absolutely the case. The conversations, not just with my own husband, it is also other men in my life, like they absolutely will do exactly as you've said. This isn't Absolutely. just an idea. This isn't just something, again, that can only happen with this, like, you know, very few women who have passed through menopause in the conscious way we're talking about. Even no. when we have been able to reclaim her in our life in the way that I've said, what you're saying energetically is so. It can't Absolutely. Be and in fact, I'd just like to draw the analogy between the cycles and the cycle of life. Mm -hmm. And I would say perimenopause is very much like PMT. Oh, it's the wild, then, wild woman. Yes, absolutely. It's exactly the same cycle, but like monthly. So yes. the way exactly that, the way I teach it is maiden, lover, mother, and then wild woman, which is that perimenopause where you're just like, yeah. everything yeah. is like annoying yeah. and so, you're so sensitive and you're just like, I'm done with this. And yeah. then into the bleed, which is say is the wise woman. And again, the Absolutely. more consciously we can be in relationship to each part of that cycle, the yes. more consciously we'll be able to journey through them when they're kind of like the cycle in our life. That's right. 
you mm. and then that's exactly what prepares you mm. for for that phase and yeah it's it's very natural christine uh Nor dr christine northrup wrote a book called the wisdom of menopause mm. and she has data in that book that says that they they've figured out how to measure intuition spiritual understanding wisdom that i think she calls it wisdom it has a massive spike at that part of the bleed mm. and it also has a massive spike in menopause we become oh. wiser mm. she's got a she's got a whole way of of talking about it it's quite astonishing so we are being prepared to be elders mm. through our monthly cycle and then through our you know, letting go of our cycles. And it's the grandmother, the elder, that can, that serves the tribe, that that nourishes the tribe. I, I, a little story comes to mind, which is quite a heartbreaking story, but it is somehow relevant to this. And it's about, because I'm in the Aboriginal country at the moment, mm -hmm. and um, there's, there's a big vote happening here right now <laughs> about, about their voice. And so I'm really learning a lot about my history um as a Australian and I and my sister I said is there any indigenous people that were like untouched in Australia she's a teacher so she knows about these things and she said no but there was this island where it was uh our only aboriginals living there but they'd um the parents had become very lost and drinking and completely in, in unable to function as parents which is a big story with a lot of indigenous cultures as we know heartbreaking and she said but what they did was the grandparents took the children to the other side of the island and educated them mm. and looked after them and I felt like that was such a good example of how much we need the grandparent the grandmother I just know it was grandmother who, who said, let's do this. I just know it was, <laughs> you know, I don't know, no, but I do know, no. Yeah. And I just thought it's such a precious, important relationship, that energetic of elder. And, and like you were pointing to earlier, you know, we don't always have the role, role models. And when it comes to women, we're called hags and crones mm. in our third phase. And I have tried, believe me, to reclaim those words, and I can't for my in my heart. They're too loaded for me. Mm. But I do want to reclaim the archetype, and I want to put her in her rightful place, where she's mostly listening, and she's mostly holding, and she's mostly allowing, and she's mostly receiving. But when she speaks. She speaks the truth that sets us all free. That's that quality to her, that depth. And, you know, I feel like as being in that chapter, I turned 60 just recently, I feel like I'm really post-menopause. I've dropped things that are not required anymore and I've become more and more the burnished wood of who I am, mm. you know, through, through trial and tribulation, through loss and grief you know, through pain, fear, and all of those things have bur burnished the wood. And now, you know, I'm that walking stick that people can lean on mm. and it's perfect as it is. So that I really want that for women my age and to serve that. And that's really what I feel like my third chapter is about. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, I love that so much. As you mentioned the archetype of or archetype the kind of one archetype the facets of the of the same archetype the hag and the crone mm. um as you know Sharon Blackie has uh created was well, more than a book you know there's a movement really that she's uh, created called Hackitude um mm. and I think there's something important about the conversation we're in and not as a kind of making what Sharon's doing in any way wrong or lacking yeah. it's like whatever you know she's doing clearly is what she's here to do and it feels as though there's some kind of important nuance in your work and your naming of this archetype and I'd love to know if you have a sense of kind of like what is the difference like what's 
in your and of course you could say well it's it's because it's your you rather than Sharon Blackie of course but more than that are you able to articulate what you are seeing as the difference between that facet of this archetype named the hag versus what you're naming the maven well I think it's our relationship with those ideas really because the hag or the crone it's it's that it's a frightening image it's a scary Mm. image it's a witchy image and I think that what I'm talking about doesn't I don't want to use the word pride it's not pride it's it's owning the preciousness of what you bring to the table it's it's owning yourself as a as a woman and that that is valuable it's about valuing what you are and that's why those words for me don't work because they're devalued they they're so devalued and what they're pointing to I think is the same thing what's mm. behind it but our society has has so demonized the words hag and crone it's it's toothless it's it's ugly and i think that we what i'm talking about is being truly who you are at every stage of your life and that you are perfect in that in that phase of your life and so yes i'm going to have wrinkles and i'm going to get old and i've been i've been my corpse face you know um you know sometimes you look at someone who you haven't seen for a while and you 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 can see they've aged and you can Mm. see that where they're going with their face you know it's they're growing into a, a a version of their you know their old face and I see that in the mirror sometimes Mm. And, and I start to love it because it's wise and I I don't know if I'm answering your question properly I just know that it's something to do with being shamelessly without any embarrassment without any regret what who you are and and every woman is a wise woman if she allows herself to be mm. And there's, there's, you know, that's it really. That's all I can tell you. But that you claim your pace at the table as a wise woman and and as a maven and one who understands something. And, you know, I don't know. I think a lot of there's, you know, we I don't, we don't have to go into the witch word now. There's a lot of um, fear that society has had for the hag and the crone mm. and the spiritual ways that are, hard to put your finger on and I think they're all things that we have to reclaim we have to we have to not be afraid to be who we are Mm. even if our heads we might be burnt um that's the that's the call now rise anyway speak anyway there's 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 people that there's people is to hear you they need it The world needs what the wise woman has to say. Mm. Yeah, we we need the grandmother. We really do. So we are up on time. Shot by. (laughs) Is there any is there anything you feel that needs to be said to feel complete for now that we didn't we didn't get the opportunity to speak to? I just I just want to talk about my aunt. Words words have power. Ideas have power. And I would describe her as archetypally feminine, really deeply feminine. The the lover really in all the ways. Mm. But she has um felt seen the feminine as weak and I said to her she was describing a situation and and I said you know 
Yielding is strength. Yielding in to consciously yielding, submitting to serve the whole is is great strength. And she was speechless. And she said, you have just changed my world. She's in her 60s. And in that moment, she reclaimed herself, Mm. saw herself with new eyes. And I feel like that's the step you have to take in order to take your place at the table and value your own voice Mm. to be the make the difference you can in the world. So I just really feel like that was an important thing to to get out there. (laughs) Mm. Yeah, there's um, some of our journey is about healing. Some of our journey is about discovering who we are. And then there's a point where it's actually just realizing like who we are is exactly who we're meant to be and is needed has yes. power yes has time to just get on and be it and and as you age it's time it's time this is it, mm. it, now is the time everything that your whole life has prepared you for now is the time and especially in the world where we are today we need to hear the grandmother's voice mm. we need to hear the voice of embodied feminine wisdom and yes it, it's it's missing mm. M- wonderful wonderful so where can listeners find out more about this incredible work that you're devoted to where can they go and find all of that so we're doing a we're running a retreat in uh to coincide with Sawain, <laughs> of course oh brilliant <laughs> um, <laughs> So it starts on the 30th of October and it runs for a week in southern Spain and it's about reclaiming your power as a wise woman. It's for women who have travelled menopause already and are ready to step and become a a flourish as an elder, have their voice be heard. And it's an opportunity to engage with the body, the mind, the soul, um, the heart and, of course, spirit itself to guide us. And so it's a beautiful journey Um nourishing food we look after you we care for you and it's a portal so you walk in as you and you walk out even more you but ready to take your place uh at any table that that you want to be at so that's um uh wisewomanways.earth and uh, we're also running about five webinars just you know to offer uh the three of us as um three of us who were working on this program together we are um, running little tasters so that you can take a deep dive into what it means to be a wise woman and nourish your body, mind, soul, spirit. So we're, we're running a series of those, and I think those will be in the link. And we've also got a Facebook group. So um, that just is lots of little snippets and content and how to make, I don't know, rose oil for your skin and, you know, all sorts of lovely, juicy things. Um, So that's kind of my wise woman ways, but I also work with leaders and I'm particularly interested in working with women to, to who are leaders and so that their voice can be heard as a wise woman in the business setting. So -hmm. there's also some um, places that you can work with me more deeply as a, as a business leader, uh, one-to-one and, and all that kind of thing. So those are the ways that's how I'm kind of unfolding. My third chapter is really empowering other women to be wise women. And there's all sorts of ways you can do that with me. Gorgeous. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. This has been, um, yeah, again, not just, not just a beautiful, nourishing, wise conversation, but one that I really feel is medicine our world needs right now. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Mm, So much love to you. Mm -hmm.